Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Shai Reshef. I'm the president of University of the People. And you are watching the first University of the People's conversation series, the first ever. And it's my and our great honor to have Deborah Spar as our first guest ever. So Deborah, um, Deborah is a senior associate dean of Harvard Business School Online. She served as the president of Barnard University for uh, 10 years prior to return to Harvard Business School. And her current uh, research focuses on uh, issues of uh, gender and technology and the interplay between technological change and broader social structures. Deborah, welcome to this um, conversation series. And why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your journey um, to becoming Senior Associate Dean of uh, Harvard Business School Online? Well, thank you. It's, it's a great pleasure. And, and thanks to everyone who's joining us here today. So <laughs> my journey is a bit of a circuitous one. Um, I've actually been Senior Associate Dean of Harvard Business School twice before. Uh, so I, uh, I, I actually have a PhD in political science. And so I've always worked on, on the intersection of the political world and the business world. I like, I like examining those sort of the spaces in between. Uh, and I, uh, I began my career at, at Harvard Business School, although I don't have a business background. And I taught the uh, political courses, the macroeconomic courses. Uh, I started a course on uh, managing international trade and investment. I became the senior associate dean for faculty development uh, for research. And, and then I left in 2008 uh, because I had the amazing opportunity to be the president of a small, wonderful liberal arts college in New York City. So I did that for a year. I'm sorry, I did that for nine years. Um, and it was incredible, sort of growing the college, expanding its global footprint. Uh, we developed uh, what is still the premier center for women's leadership at, a, at an undergraduate college. And, uh, and then I became the president of Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts for, the, for one year. I realized that that was a mistake because my heart and my brain are in the world of education. And so I came back to Harvard Business School in uh, 2018. And um, I've been incredibly lucky as part of my responsibilities at HBS to have been appointed in, in this new role uh, overseeing Harvard Business School online. And as you mentioned at the outset, you know, I've, I've increasingly done research on how technology reshapes society and reshapes gender roles. And so in my position at HBS Online, I have the incredible opportunity to help shape how Harvard Business School is going to enter uh, the digital future. Well, that's, that is exciting. And as part of it, um, you basically initiated our collaboration. So we are here today uh, to talk about uh, what we just announced, the collaboration between uh, Harvard Business School Online and University of the People, whereas our students are able uh, to take uh, certain, several of uh, Harvard Business School Online courses, get credit if they take the core program, the three courses of the core program, they get credit for them uh, with the University of the People, but also a Harvard a Business School Online Certificate, which we believe will give them an amazing additional tool to the job market. So we are very proud to have this uh, opportunity. And I guess that uh, I would like uh, you to tell us about how this you initiated the idea. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Deborah is a member of University of the People President's Council. and. She initiated, approached us with the idea of having this collaboration, which obviously we are extremely proud of. So, Deborah, how this idea came about? Sure. So it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. So I uh, I've only been in this role for about fifteen months now, and um, so I inherited this beautiful uh, expanding program where uh, Harvard Business School Online has, has built these portfolio of courses and over the years began a program uh, called the Collaborating Colleges Program, where we take our content and we, we work with a series of collaborating colleges, mostly in the United States, I think all up until now, until the United States. And um, we, deliver, they, we deliver our content uh, to their students. 
Um, and so as I moved into the role, it became clear to me and to the team that part of our mission, a big part of our mission is expanding the reach. So the, the content is built already. How we believe it's the best content out there, somewhat arrogantly, but we think it's, it's really good, it's really unique, it's really engaging. And so how do we get it to more and more people? And so when I started uh, learning uh, shy about what you've been doing at the University of the People, uh, just sitting there in our one of our virtual meetings, it just it, it was a very, very straightforward connection to say, hang on, they've built, they, you at the University of People have built this incredible network. And in particular, we, we at HBS Online really want to make sure that we're reaching a wide diversity of students. There's, there's so many students out there who haven't heard of Harvard Business School Online, don't think that Harvard Business School can ever be a part of their lives. And we're trying to reach those populations. We're trying to reach those learners. And we don't necessarily have ways to reach them. They're, they're not in our networks and we're not in theirs. And so, Shai, the more I learned about the incredible network you've built at University of the People, it struck me, hang on, let's see if there's a way to, to bring these two entities together. Indeed, indeed so, and we feel that from that perspective, we are very similar because we are as diverse as, uh, as you can think. Looking at our U.S. population of students, 30% of our students are black compared to the 14% nationally. 60% um, of our students are first generation students, while the national average is 33. And 50% of our students are parents, while the national average uh, is 22. By the way, 30% of our 30 percent of our faculty is black compared to 6% nationally. So we really opened the gates, you people opened the gates to every qualified student without looking at their gender, at their, at their race, at their, wherever they come from, anyone who is qualified, um, can get the opportunity for higher education. So we open the doors wide for everyone. While doing so, we are uh, trying to give a quality education to them, the best education we can give them. But we also, all the way, all the, all the time, looking for ways to give more opportunities to our students. And that's why we have partnership with NYU and Edinburgh and Berkeley uh, to enable our students to move there. However, uh, when Deborah approached us with the uh, Harvard Business School online offer to enable our students to take um, Harvard Business School online uh, courses and uh, um, and get the core uh, pro to be part of the core program and get the certificate for the job market, we said this is an amazing opportunity for our students. And if we can give more to our students, that's exactly what we should do. But at the same time, if we can open our students to what Harvard Business School is, uh, to teach them about the quality of the courses, to uh, open the world for them, and who knows, maybe one day they will continue with Harvard Business School. Why not? That, that no, that's will... exactly right. And, you know, I think what, what we've been been exploring and, and expanding upon is that Har Harvard Business School is a package of many things, right? We have a great tradition. We have great faculty. But at the core, what we're really about is education. And we've developed what we believe is a very specific pedagogy. It's, it's the pedagogy that we pioneered way back in the last century called case-based learning. And rather than teaching business skills and management uh, techniques through lecture or textbooks, we essentially teach through stories. Every one of our faculty members is a storyteller. And if you're in our physical classrooms, you don't see, and we never lecture. We're not allowed to lecture. We don't, we don't assign textbooks. Instead, every class begins with a conundrum. The, the classic phrase is, you know, Shai Reshef was sitting in his office wondering what to do. And we present a problem and we present a leader, a manager, what we call him protagonist, who's trying to solve a problem. And the way the class operates is that you get 90 smart people in a physical room and they solve the problems together. And it's, in, we know through, decades of experience now, it's a very powerful way for people to learn because you retain it. When you read things in a textbook, you don't retain it nearly as well as when you've actually sat in the classroom and you've argued with your classmates and you've argued with the professor and you together solve a set of problems. 
what we've managed to do at HBS Online, and, and, and this is the part that we're proudest of, is we've managed to capture that case-based learning in the virtual environment. Um, initially, Harvard Business School didn't want to try uh, online delivery because we, we didn't think we could capture this, this secret sauce, but we can. And, and we really do feel now that we've been able to capture it. And it's expensive, right? Building this content is very expensive to, to do well. But now that we have it and you know, we, we are privileged to have the funds to be able to make that investment, the next step now is to get it to everyone who wants it and who can benefit from it, not only the 900 people a year who happen to step foot on our, on our physical campus. No, I, I think it, it's great. I mean, everyone knows that, that Harvard Business School and Harvard Pedagogy is the best. And I think that uh, enabling others to experience it and to try it and see how powerful it is, is extremely, extremely important. Now, we obviously believe in our pedagogy and in our case, uh, it's, it's a peer-to-peer -peer learning and the students uh, do not see live lec do not see lectures but rather uh, watch videos or collaborate uh, among themselves on the topic of the week so it's a different pedagogy but actually both of them are pedagogies that enable uh, us and you to go wide and spread the education to a lot of people who otherwise would not be able to to do that and i think that from that perspective harvard business school online and you people are very similar because we opened the gates to, as I said, to anyone who uh, is qualified for higher education and want to try it. And we have right now 50, over 57,000 students from over 200 countries. Six, over 6,000 of them are refugees. Uh, we develop University of the People in Arabic, where we have already, we just started, but we already have over 2,500 students. So we are really trying to reach uh, those people who have no other opportunity. But in a way, um, when I hear you, Harvard Business School Online is the way for Harvard Business School also to reach those people who would never dream to go to Harvard Business School. And it's a great way to spread the word about Harvard, about the quality of uh, higher, edu higher uh, of uh, the quality of uh, online education but also about business school, because a lot of people, and, and I heard you saying it uh, before, and maybe you do want to talk, uh, to say a few words about it. It's an opportunity to teach people about uh, business uh, administration, what it is in, in general, and what Harvard uh, is doing in particular there. Yeah. yeah, and I think, you know, as someone, I've spent my entire life in the nonprofit sector. Um, including having had, you know, several major leadership roles in that sector. And people need business skills, even if they're not in for-profit businesses. And I think this is part of the message that we're trying to get out. Uh, because I think, you know, occasionally there's a perception that, you know, Harvard Business School is about captains of industry. And, you know, we only train CEOs. And, and that's not true. You know, we do, we do educate people who go on to become CEOs of major corporations. But we also educate people who go on to run nonprofit charter school networks. We train people who go on to run ballet companies. We train people who, go, you know, to go on to, you know, to, they, they may drop out of the labor force, but be really important in their local school board. I, I believe, because I've, I've had to do it, as I'm sure you have and everyone who's listening, you know, I've had to manage people and manage money. And, and those are not things that come intuitively to most people. They're things that can be learned. And, and if we together, you know, can find ways to give more people those skills, uh, that can just only be a good thing. You know, the more people who are educated to know how to manage people, manage money, manage their careers, manage their lives, manage this increasingly complicated, messy world we're living in. I mean, whoever would have thought that supply chain logistics would become the single most important item in the world. But that's we are all dependent right now on pharmaceutical supply chain logistics. We need more people who know how to manage supply chain logistics. And I really do see it as, as our responsibility to educate as many people as we possibly can. I can't agree more. And I, I would also add to that, that if we, if, if all of our students who are watching, and I see that a lot of people are watching this, um, this um, a conversation, um, if you're interested in joining, please go 
Uh, we are, all, all of our students who will be qualified for it uh, are more than welcome to go. Uh, ask your program advisors. And we have, for those who do not know, we have program advisor for every, every one of our students. So ask our, your program ad advisors about um, the criteria to apply. We want as many students who are qualified to get the opportunity. We believe it's an amazing opportunity. And experiencing Harvard uh, Business School online courses is a one in a lifetime opportunity, which if you start there, who knows, maybe later on you will continue with it, but you will no doubt uh, get a lot out of it. We are very proud of this partnership, with this uh, collaboration and very happy to, um, to encourage our students uh, to join. Um, you know, I would like to ask you something about our students. And from your perspective, um, what advice would you give them? Would you give you people, students who are interested in, in uh, HBS online courses? What should they know? Or what should they prepare, be prepared for? Well, there's, there's nothing uh, magical, you know, to be honest. These, you know, these, these are courses that, you know, the most important thing to know is that they're case-based. Um, I would urge any of, of your students to give it a try. Um, it's the, the material is engaging. Uh, it, of course, it's hard, but it's not impossibly hard. Um, you will meet people from around the world. I, I did a, a session last night. I did a book talk uh, for a number of our HBS online learners. And what was so lovely, uh, it was a live session, was that there were people in the room from, I believe, 16 different countries. And many of them had never met in person, but they knew each other because they had been taking classes together. And so, and this is something, you know, we, we didn't know how it would work out, but it turns out that the, the social community um, among our learners is really strong. Uh, people are meeting each other. Uh, they're becoming friends. They're becoming colleagues. They're becoming part of each other's professional networks. So I would really urge your folks, give it a try. Um, you know, you'll have to work hard, uh, but, but I think it's, it's a really powerful experience and you'll learn a lot. You know, you'll walk away from these courses with a with a set of skills that you didn't have before. And as I think we're all learning as as more and more of our, our lives migrate onto these technologies, such as the one you and I are speaking on today, that that we we can do all kinds of things online that we never thought we could. And most of our learners report that they feel like they know their professors. Um, they've never met them in real life, but even our faculty say now, you know, back in the days when we could still go to airports, you know, when they're walking through the airport, they're they're regularly now greeted by people who say, oh, my God, you were my professor. And there were people who, who were on the online courses. But that relationship, which is a special relationship between a teacher and and his or her students, uh, that relationship we've discovered has carried over really strongly into the into the online environment. Well, you know, I can't agree more with you talking about the opportunity. We at your people basically opened the opportunity for some who have no other opportunity, but others that have very few opportunities, and we we give them a great opportunity. Now, with the Harvard Business School Online, we have even a greater opportunity for our students, and I hope that as many of our students um, who can and wish to do so will do so, and we already, as we announce it, we already have students who applied. Um, and uh, I'm sure that many more will come. Um, it's, uh, it's great. We will be, we can be happier to have many of our students uh, go through, go and take the courses of uh, Harvard Business School online and experience them and get credit and get the course certificate for the job market. It will be a great success for us, and I'm sure it will be a great success for Harvard Business School Online doing it as well. So, yeah, I think that that's uh, the main uh, message there. Um, anything that you would like to add? No, it's just it's a it's a wonderful opportunity to work with you and your team. Uh, I'm sorry we 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 don't have the technology to actually uh, see the folks who are on the on the call right now, but welcome to you all. Uh, I hope we get to see some of you in in class. And we look forward to hearing um, your thoughts, your suggestions, your ideas. You know, we are still a, a relatively new enterprise. We've been around for six years. We're, we're growing at, at a very rapid pace. 
but we're really trying to find out how to be better and how to be more diverse. And, and again, one of the big attractions of you of, of people for us is the diversity of the student body, the diversity in age range, the diversity of life experiences. Uh, so we look forward to hearing from you uh, and we look forward you know, to, to learning from you how we can better do a better job of diversifying uh, all of our content and, and really all of Harvard Business School because uh, it's really important to us and it's really important to the mission of the school. Good. So let me just finish by asking you a general question. So with your vast experience and amazing success in higher education, what the best piece of advice you can give our students and others who may be watching? A general one. Yeah, so my, my general advice is, is people should learn lots and lots of different things. You know, follow, follow your passion to learn whatever, whatever interests you, but get really good at one or two things. You know, figure out, and sometimes it, it takes a while for people to, to really figure out what they're good at. And, and oftentimes that's not specifically attached to a job. It's not that I'm a good account manager. It's that I'm really good with people, or I'm really good with numbers, or I'm a really good communicator. And I think it's really important for people to understand what they're good at and then get the skill sets they need. Um, because the world increasingly is going to reward people with specific specific skills, whether that's programming, Excel spreadsheets, writing, um, and, and really actively go out and get the skills you need. And I would put in a particular plug. Uh, it's very important for women and, and people from underrepresented groups to learn finance. Uh, there's a tendency to shy away from finance, thinking that that's not for me, but power follows money. Maybe sad, but it's true. And you need to speak the language of power, which is very frequently the language of money. So make sure you understand the basics of finance, the basics of economics, and then figure out what you really want to excel at. That's extremely powerful and smart. Thank you. And let me just add that if I might add, my advice is that uh, if, you have an, if you have an opportunity, grab it. And we are now together with the uh, University of the People in collaboration with Harvard Business uh, School Online, give you a great opportunity. Grab it, don't miss it. So Deborah, thank you so much. I think it was incredible conversation. I enjoyed it much. I hope the other people enjoyed it as well, but I enjoyed it, so. We are <laughs> happy, so that's good. <laughs> thank you so much and uh, Let's hope that soon we will be talking about how great we have done. So thank In you. July, yes. <laughs> thank you. And thank you. Thanks all the audience. And uh, hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Thanks. Bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.